friends, you are Crafting with Kim Byers and today we are going to make something really, really cute. I mean, these are so cute. So we are going to make candy cane Christmas mugs. And so these are something that I've been wanting to make. Actually, I wanted to make them really badly last year and I didn't get around to it. I put together this little hot cocoa station in my kitchen every year. Um, it's just a, a way to kind of like get us in the spirit of things and you know, we all like have hot chocolate and watch like a little movie or something at night. It's just a way to unwind. Um, we are busy, you guys are busy, everybody's so busy that it's kind of just a nice way to end the, the night, you know, right around Christmas. So we put together this hot coast cocoa station and these are going to be the mugs that I have this year. So we are going to use the mug press in sublimation, um, but you could use infusible ink, which is Cricut's version of sublimation. But if you don't have either one of those, it's okay because I have you covered. You can use vinyl to make these mugs as well. And I'm gonna put a video up above showing you how to make these mugs with vinyl. But if you have either one of those, the mug press or um, sublimation printer, or both actually, we're going to use those today. And these are going to be so cute. You are going to love this. And you can personalize them, which is what I'm doing with the candy canes. I can't wait to show you. Okay, so let's hop over to um, Cricut Design Space because I'm actually gonna show you how to do this in Cricut Design Space. And then we are going to pop over um, to the craft table and put them all together. And I'm gonna show you how to do it from beginning to end. If you guys have not already, hop down in the description, check out everything that we're using today. And I would love for you to leave me a comment or a question. If you, if you have questions about what we're doing, leave those for me. Or if you just want to, I would love to hear from you. So just hop down and talk to me. <laughs> All right, guys, so let's get going. Okay, so here we are in Cricut Design Space and I've gone ahead and pulled in the things that I want to work with today. But what I want to tell you right up front is what I'm going to show you how to do is not only use Cricut Design Space for sublimation. And again, if you don't have a sublimation printer, you can absolutely use infusible ink for this. There will just be um, some modifications or tweaks that you would have to make. But what I'm gonna show you today is how to create a mug, a sublimation mug in Cricut Design Space from scratch. Okay, so what you see here is a pre-designed mug in Cricut Design Space. You see the image that I'm wanting to use, and then this is what my final is going to look like. So what I've done is I've taken this pre-designed and stripped away the things that I don't want, which, you know, world's greatest, all that stuff, and I've kept the template size. So now I know exactly how big uh, the wrap will be around the mug, and then I can size my design to that. So your handle is about right here. And so if you put this design or line it up with the world's greatest, then you know that you are putting it in the perfect spot when you take it over to the mug. Okay, so there's my tip for you. <laughs> Do it the easy way, don't measure a million times, use a template. And then the other thing is this is the design that I took from Cricut Design Space, and so we're gonna modify that and size it to work with our mug. So you can do this with any design. So it, once you have this template, you can go into the thousands, hundreds of thousands of designs within Cricut Design Space and grab those and use those for sublimation and or infusible ink. Okay, so first let me show you how to find this template. So if you go over into images and you look in operation type, layers, project type, and you open up project type, you're going to see there are two different sizes of mugs. And so I am using the smaller of the two today. So you click on that, and it's gonna pop up and give you all of these pre-designed images. And so once you have that, you could choose any of these that kind of shows you exactly where that design is going to fall. I wouldn't use this because that's not going to give you um, you know, that reference, that point of reference, but anything like this that has a double image is going to show you where to put your design on the one that you are creating. So you just grab one of those, add it to the canvas. I already have one, so I'm gonna cancel out. Okay, so this is what my canvas currently looks like. Let's just quickly reduce this and let me move a few things out of the way because I wanna show you from scratch how I did this. So this is my A, obviously I tweaked all my letters and. Um, you know, changed all of my colors. Let me grab this guy and I'm going to group him so that he's all together and then I'm just going to hide him. Okay, so what we wanna do is we're going to take our world's greatest. There's two things we wanna do with this. We're gonna duplicate it, okay? And so we are going to go into the contour tool. If you've not ever used contour before, then um, I'm gonna put a little video up above for you 
But basically what we want to do is we want to get rid of everything that says anything. We just want the background template. But we want to keep one, and I'll show you why. So if we go over into Contour, and the nice thing about this is we can hide all contours. It gets rid of everything except for our template. So then we click off. So now we have this template. And just because I, I'm so visual, I'm going to turn it white. Um, and so let's put it down below the one that still has the design. Okay. So then what we can do is we take our A and we're going to move it over, go over into a range and send it to the front just so that we can see it. Let's go ahead and adjust it roughly to the size that we think that we want it to be. And if you notice, we are lining it up with this world's greatest. Okay, so Cricut has already predetermined exactly where these designs need to go so that you can see them from the front and the back of the mug. This is right here where the handle would be. So we're going to use their design to sort of line ourselves up. Okay, so I made it a little bit larger so that you could see it. So now the very first decision you need to make is do you want to keep the current color set? And if you like it the way that it is, great, we're ready to move on. If you want to make any changes to that, now is the time to do it because we are going to duplicate things. And you don't want to have to go through the color changes more than once. So if you want to change colors, when you click on the A and you look over into layers, it highlights everything to do with that particular design. And so then you can go ahead and you know click on whatever that color might be. You look up into color palettes and then you change it to whatever you would like for that to be. So I just changed those um, berries to be a little bit redder. And then you may want to go into the pink and if you wanted um, it to be a more traditional color, you could change that. And then changing um, you know, the outline of the blue to green, like whatever you want that to be, this is when you do that. Once you've decided that that is perfect, we are actually going to print this and not cut it, okay? So once you've done that, you click on your A and you go up into basic and we are going to do a print then cut. We're gonna turn that to print then cut. You'll see that it, it changes slightly only because it's taking off that black outline, which is basically the indicator on Cricut that you're gonna cut something. Well, since we're not cutting it anymore, it does look like it shifts a little bit because it's taking off the black outline. So now what you've got, if you look over into layers, layers will always tell you, you have all these different print then cut elements. So it's gonna print the leaf and cut the leaf and it's gonna print and cut you know, the little um, outline. We don't wanna do that, do we? So we're gonna be sublimating. We're printing it all at one time and applying it all at one time. So what you wanna do is you want to go down and hit flatten. That is going to make your A one piece. So you hit that button and all of a sudden in layers you have one thing that says flatten and that's perfect. So now once you have your A, you can literally just duplicate it and then you can move that over and again centering it with the one above so that you know you have your placement perfect. And I would suggest grabbing both of those, grabbing both A's and hitting align and you could align bottom so that you know the bottom of the A's are hitting the exact you know, spot, and you could even attach them. Um, this is going to allow you to be able to send them to the mat perfectly together. They're not going to shift. Um, and then, of course, you could move it up and down on this if you wanted to. Now, here's the catch. This is, this template piece is actually um, a cut, and because you are not cutting anything, it's going to disappear. But if you have lined up your A's, and you have attached them just like I showed you, then they are not going to shift from each other, okay? So what that means is that when you get over to mat and if you're printing more than one thing, you do wanna give a little separation so that you can cut these out and then apply them to your mug, but you're not going to have the actual template, although you are going to have the proper spacing. It works out, I promise. Okay. okay, so I just made it a little bit bigger so we could see everything. I'm actually going to get rid of that little peppermint, although he was so cute. And I'm going to make multiple mugs. So I'm going to make one for each of my children and for myself. My husband does not like coffee or hot chocolate. Shame on him, right, Grinch? So um, I'm not making one for him, but, okay, so if you guys have ever heard of the storybook or the book, um, Jay is for Jesus. 
You guys ever heard that? I bought it way back when my kids were little. But basically, it's the story of the candy cane and how the candy cane came into being. Um, and it is a absolutely fabulous story, but it's called J is for Jesus. And so I'm going to actually put a link to that book down below because I would love for you guys to check that out for your kids. Um, but I'm also going to make a mug um, because I just think that it's super sweet and I want to make four. Okay, so what I've done is gone ahead and exactly like I did with the A that had the green outline, I made them all the colors that I personally want to use for my family. So um, my sons, A and C, and then myself, and then my JS for Jesus. Um, and I was going to show you guys how to do a pattern design, but I think I'll save that for another video. So if you're interested in that, um, leave me a comment down below and I'll I'll quickly put one of those together for you guys. Um, so basically what we've done is we, you know, gotten everything the color we want it to be and we flattened it. And so if you look over into my layers panel, um, everything is flattened. So everything is one individual design. Um, so what we're going to do now is we are going to send these to the map. And I'm going to hit make it. Okay, and so here is what they all look like on the mat. So it has already moved them to an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper so it can go through your printer because again, these are all print then cut. Um, and so what you wanna make sure that you do is you mirror image your design. So when you click mirror image, it's literally just gonna turn them around on the mat and that's perfect because that's what you have to have for sublimation, infusible ink, anything where you're applying heat, you're doing that backwards. Okay, so we can go down to the other mats and do each of those as mirror image. So we'll mirror image, and then you can go ahead and hit continue. Let's go down, I'm gonna use the single version. Okay, we mirror image, we hit continue. And at this point, you can go ahead and send to printer. Now, um, it says to connect a machine and so if it forces you to, you know, connect your maker or your explorer, but I have had some success lately with going ahead and hitting send to print and not having to connect it to a machine. Um, and so you can see here, I have my Epson 2720, and then you have these options. So when you are print then cut with Cricut, where you're actually gonna cut it with a Cricut, the bleed is so important because it basically adds an extra layer of ink around the entire design so that if the blade gets off slightly, it's still, you know, you don't have any white. Well, we don't want to bleed because we don't want that fuzzy edge for our print. So you make sure you turn the bleed off and then use the system dialog box. Okay, if you do not use the system dialog box like I'm about to show you to do, your design will not be crisp. It will not be really pretty because what's going to happen is your printer is going to choose the lowest setting to save ink. Okay, It's going to think you're printing a document from work or something instead of a beautiful design. So we're going to hit that dialog box and so now we hit print and so it's going to spin um, but it should it's probably going to pop up behind your Cricut Design Space box. So just move everything out of the way and then there is your print. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to look at our options and everyone's box is going to look different depending on what printer you have. But you have pretty much all the same options. So we definitely want color. Um, we want to look at, you can look at media quality, um, media type here. So this is important. Choose a photo quality. Now your sublimation paper is matte paper. I always choose photo matte paper. Um, and then if you look on mine, it automatically takes it to quality of best. So it's not holding any of that ink back. It's actually giving me all the ink for a photo quality um, image. So now what we want to do is hit print and head on over to our printer. Okay, so here we are at my Epson printer. So I just fed the paper in the top like a normal printer and it's just printing it out. You can see I have a lot of ink in the cartridges right now. And what you should expect when it pops out is maybe slightly muted colors. Um, but once you apply heat to the sublimation ink, it will get very bright. 
Okay, so here we are on the craft table and these are the things that we're going to use today. So I have my mug and this is a special mug. This is actually, this is Cricut brand, um, but these are sublimation mugs. And so if you um, just go to the Dollar General or something and grab a mug, it's not the same. It has to have like a poly coating on it for the ink to adhere to it. So just make sure that you're getting a sublimation mug or you're getting these Cricut brand infusible ink mugs. Um, and then I have a lint roller, I have heat tape, pair of scissors or paper trimmer if you have that. Um, this is parchment paper, but um, butcher paper is typically what you would use, but I can't find it anywhere, so I've been using parchment paper. Uh, the Target brand, which is what this is, and the Walmart brand, and they both work great. Um, and so this is our printout, and as beautiful as it is, it's going to be much more vibrant once we put it on to the actual mug with heat. And so this is my heat press. Okay, so let's go ahead and move everything out of the way and we'll cut out our first design. Oh, and one thing, this is the A sub paper um, that I have been using. And so this is, I just get this off of Amazon. I'm gonna put links to this down below as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and shift everything out of the way and get started. So when you print this out with uh, Cricut Design Space, it's going to have this black bounding box around it. And now this is printed onto sublimation paper, so if you leave any of that black box, it will sublimate over onto the mug. So make sure that we trim that all the way out. And you can use a pair of scissors, or you can use your paper trimmer. I love a paper trimmer just because everything is perfect all of the time. Um, and by the way, because this got me for a second as well, so you're looking at it and you're like, oh my goodness, you forgot to mirror image it. I didn't. It's just, it's, <laughs> it literally, this is the way that it looks when it goes on to the mug. And so at first, it's just human nature, right, to make it right side up to where you can see it. But literally, the design is this way. So um, it is backwards. It just confused me for a second. So in case um, you thought the same thing, I wanted you guys to realize that. Okay, so we're just gonna trim out all of the black edges and then we'll wrap it onto the mug. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to take our design and we are going to place it onto our mug. But before you do that, you have to use a lint roller and just make sure that you have no lint on your mug because um, in packaging and stuff, it can get on there. And if you leave um, any lint or anything on your mug, then when you apply your ink, it will actually stick to the lint. And so then when you pull it away, you'll have speckles and you know ugly marks on your design and you don't want that. So this is not a step that you want to miss, okay? So once you've taken care of that, and by the way, some of you have really liked this little um, pink um, lint roller, and I've placed it down in the description below in case you want to check that out, along with this little um, tape dispenser as well. Okay, so now once you have the mug, what we want to do is we want to take our design and again, making sure that we have it, you know, flipped the correct way. So actually it's upside down. So I am going to place it kind of eyeball it. The nice thing about using the template now, right, these are perfectly spaced apart. And so when I get my, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but I can see through the sublimation paper. Um, and I'm gonna kind of get it where I think it should be and flip it around. And you can use a little tape measure. Sometimes I'll use a fabric tape measure um, just to make sure that it's perfect on top and bottom. So let's just do that really quickly. So we can take, actually I want this end of the tape measure and just make sure that it is perfectly spaced. The last thing you wanna do is do all that work, right? And then it not be perfectly in the center. Okay, I think we're good on that side. And what you can do is you can, you know, once you feel like you have it perfect on one side, you can go ahead and use your heat tape. Now guys, this is a special tape, so only use heat tape. And it doesn't have to be Cricut brand, this is, but just make sure that you're using heat tape because scotch tape um, will melt right into your design. It will melt right into your mug. It will make a mess of your machine. Um, this tape can withstand 400 degrees, and so just make sure that you use the right tape for that. Okay, so now that we have our design, I'm just, you know, guys know me, I'm sorry. I'm gonna just check it one more quick time just to make sure that we're right, and then I'm going to place down my tape. 
Okay, and so now on this side, because it can shift a little bit, you know, um, if the paper's wobbly, meaning that you don't have it straight, like it, if you watch it kind of like will shift in my fingers. And so just make sure that you double check the other side. Again, we don't want to take that chance that it's not perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, and so now once you get that in place with the heat tape, the very next thing we wanna do is we want to wrap it in parchment paper or butcher paper if you can find it. So I have a piece of parchment paper, and so I am just going to run it through my machine, my mug, my design, you know, it's roughly three inches. I'm just going to use my paper trimmer and cut off some slivers of parchment paper. Then I'm gonna take my mug, and we want to make this three deep, okay? So we want to use three pieces. This is going to protect our machine. Now it looks like I'm gonna to need to cut off a couple inches. I could have made that just a little bit shorter. We'll save that one for later. So we're gonna wrap that around our mug. Okay, making sure that it's covered. And then we're going to place another piece of heat tape. Another piece of heat tape. And now we are ready to put that into the mug press. Okay, so here's our mug press, and it is as simple as setting the mug down inside the press, making sure that your handle is in the middle Okay, and then closing the press. And so the indicator lights have started and so it will let you know when it's done. Okay, so the machine has turned itself off um, and so all we have to do is open and lift it up and place it on to a pressing mat. This is just a, the heat press mat or onto a towel or something like that that will protect it um, or protect your surface because the mug is really hot. The handle is not hot, but the mug itself is really hot. Now what we wanna do is we want to allow it to cool completely before we unwrap it. So that's gonna be 12 to 15 minutes or so. Okay, so our mug is completely cooled, and so now what we just need to do is go ahead and take off our heat tape. And the nice thing about heat tape too is it does not leave a residue, so nothing is sticky, um, and we can kind of just pull that off. This is, to me, the most fun. I love this, it's like um, opening up a present, kind of getting to see what the big, you know, what the big reveal is. So we'll kind of pop that away, take off our tape. So you can see through already, like that's going to be really, really vibrant. I am so excited. Oh my goodness, guys. That is beautiful. Look how vibrant. That is so amazing. I am really excited about these. And look how you can tell the difference between the reds. So I did some of the red a little bit darker than the other. So it's kind of an outline of the berry. It turned out perfect, absolutely perfect. Okay, so this is the little hot cocoa station that I put together in my kitchen. I have my little um, Kringle Candy hot cocoa and confection sign. I actually made that with my Cricut. I'll put a link down below on how to do that. And if you can tell, it's actually glitter. Isn't that fun? It, it is really fun. I keep it every year. I made it two or three years ago. Um, and then I have a wreath. I have these sweet little um, signs. This house believes, of course, in candy cane, sweets, and Christmas trees. And then I have my cart. Um, and on the cart, I have like the little tree for all the mugs. And so that's when my little mug comes into play. So I'll put one for each of the family. And then my little J is for Jesus. Um, and then I have hot cocoa packets and I have candy canes and marshmallows, cute little stir sticks, little tree stir sticks. Um, and then I have some garland with bells. Um, it says jingle all the way. And I have the little Santa mail box. And this is the snowball. I have these, I got these little tins um, from Target a couple of years ago. You could easily make those with the Cricut. 
Um, but the little snowballs, we put the ones that you do inside the house, you know, the little pom-pom like snowballs so you can have snowball fights. And then of course, uh, we had to have some pine cones for the reindeer. So that is my little hot cocoa station that I do every year for the family. I hope you guys like it and I hope you like the mugs. Okay guys, before we go, I just want to show you this. This is the book that I was talking about. I bought it at my church um, bookstore back when my boys were like, I don't know, two and four. But this is the coolest story. It's the coolest book. It is a, um, you know, like thick cardboard like book or whatnot. But it basically, it's the story of how the candy cane came into being. And this is my favorite part. So um, it's basically, you know, the candy cane looks like the shepherd's staff. And um, then it talks about, you know, the, the story, obviously, of Jesus' birth. Um, and then this, where is it? Where is it? I got to show you guys this. It's so sweet. Oh, here we go. So um, it talks about how, you know, Jesus was born to save us from sin and to make us holy and clean within, like the snow and... Gosh, here we go. Oh, and then it tells everyone to give someone else a candy cane and tell them of the story. You know, J is for Jesus. Turn it around. It's the shepherd's staff. And then um, how, you know, Jesus wipes our sin clean. And then to give a candy cane to someone um, when you want to share the story of Jesus with them. So I just thought this was the sweetest thing. I loved sharing it with my kids when I was little. And then, you know, to go out and give candy canes to others. But I'm going to see if I can find this book and link it up down below uh, in case any of you guys want to tell or show your children uh, the sweetest story ever told. This book um, was by Zonker Kids, written by Crystal Bowman and illustrated by Claudine Gevry, maybe? So anyway, I just really wanted to show you guys that. Oh, it even has the, it was $6.99 about, what, you know, 12 years ago. So um, I hope you guys will check that out. Okay, so what'd you think? Those were really fun, right? And those are so sweet. And of course, this process you can use to make any design with sublimation or with infusible ink or with vinyl but these are adorable and I'm so excited to put them on um, a little card I hope you liked my little setup for my hot cocoa station and I hope that you guys will hit that subscribe button and join me for all my future videos I'll see you guys next time